Hello all. In this lecture, we'll see about physical data storage organization. So the database what we have created and the data that we want to wants to want to store need to be stored in the hard disk or secondary storage devices. So we'll be learning about physical uh, storage mechanisms, how to store these data in uh, hard disk or secondary storage devices. So this is the outline of this lecture. We will have an introduction, then uh, what is records, fixed length, the difference between fixed length and variable length records, what do you mean by record blocking or blocking factor, then spanned versus unspanned records, heap files and sorted files. So this is the first part of physical data organization. Later sessions we will see hash, hash files and all. So collection of data, that is what we have uh, stored, what we have to store, that is collection of data that makes up a computerized database must be stored physically on some computer storage medium like we have primary storage that is RAM or any we need to store in uh, secondary storage or we may have to store in tertiary storage that is we may have to back up in some other device all these database items so we have to do these things so how to store all everything in the hard disk so that is what we are going to learn so i am not going to talk about what is a hard disk how is this hard disk working and all those things so it is available in the text you can read uh, how is this hard disk working and all so i am directly going to the uh, record section so record it consists of a collection of related data values or items so in the hard disk data is stored in the form of records and this uh, this record consists of a collection of related data values or items where value is formed of one of one or more bytes and corresponds to a particular field of the record so value means it is some field of the record so for example if you take this uh, employee so records describe entities and their attributes for example if you take this employee record it represents an employee entity and uh, we can have these that attributes in it name birth date salary uh, supervisor all these are the attributes in it so these are known as a value or items so these are known as name birth date are all known as value or items and this employee for a particular person we will have a record if we want to store the details of john there will be a john's record and in john's record these are the items that will be available and this uh, these data types can have some data type we have already seen numeric string boolean data and like this there are different data types for each of the items data values or items that is being stored and we can have uh, other binary large objects we call it as blobs so it is uh, typically stored uh, separately from its record it is not structured object this this is a record is a structured object whereas this binary large objects are not structured objects okay they are stored separately uh, they will be stored in a pool of disk blocks okay we will store the pointer of that block so we need not worry about all these things we will be talking about this record so record it is collection of related data values so if you for example employee record if we want to store john's record so we will have to store john's full name then birth date salary his supervisor everything all this will form the record okay now next we will see what is file what do you mean by files what are fixed length records and variable length records so file it is a sequence of records so file can be considered as a sequence of records okay so all records in a file will be of same record type so if we store different records in a file for example if i am storing the department csc's uh, employee details so we may have 15 or 20 employees are there in the computer science department so 20 uh, records will be stored as a single file so file is a sequence of records and in files we can in records we can have we have fixed length and variable length so if every record in the file has exactly the same size 
in bytes, the file is said to be made of say, fixed length records. So if you are storing uh, 20 employees details in a single file, so 20 records are there and each record has the same size, then we call it as fixed length records. Then if different records in the file have different sizes, the files is said to be made up of variable length records. So if 20 employees have 20 different sizes, then we can say call it as variable length records. Okay. So, so there are various reasons for this uh, variable length uh, records. First reason is uh, one or more fields have variable length. For example, the name, name of an employee. It is a data value or item inside a record. So name, it is variable. Uh, every person will not have the fixed size. Uh, they will have variable names. So uh, that is one reason why we have variable length records. So one or more fields have variable length. For example, name in the employee record. It is variable. Then another reason is one or more fields are repeating. There will be a repeating records that will be there. We need, may have to store uh, multiple values for individual records. So, so in that case, there will be variable size records. Okay. Then another reason for variable length record is one or more fields are optional. In certain cases, it might be optional. There will be uh, optional fields in the database. So for certain people, you will fill that optional field. And for certain people, you will not fill that optional field. So, so if we store such records, it will be of variable length. Then file contains records of different uh, types. So it might be mixed files. For example, a grade report of a student. It might be uh, different for different students. Maybe students will take additional courses and all. So grades will be different for them. So file contains records of different types. In that case also, we have to store records in variable length records. Okay. So this is a case of fixed and variable. This is an example for this fixed and variable length records. So this is a fixed length record. So uh, the total size of this record is uh, 60 plus 71 bytes. Uh, so it is 71 bytes. So first uh, 30 is for uh, 30 is for number sorry name then the next uh, some 10 digits are for ssn like that it will be split into so this is the whole record this is a whole record which consists of 71 bytes so this is a fixed length record and we have six fields one two three four five six fields are there so this is a fixed length record then uh, this is another example for uh, fixed. This is a record with two variable lengths, length fields and three fixed length fields. So there are two variable length. So this is denoted by separation. This, this denotes separation. So this, these are variable length fields. So computer and Smith John are variable length fields because some other person's department will be production. So the name, it is variable size. Similarly here, name will be also variable. So this denotes, this dark shade denotes, these two are variable sizes. These two are variable sizes, okay. And uh, these three are fixed fields. These three are fixed fields because SSN, everyone will be having this nine number digit or salary will be a five uh, number or five digit salary like that so a job code will be a code with four digits or four something so these two are variable fields and the rest of the three are fixed length then this is another record where we have uh, three types of characters so all these are variables so all these are considered to be variables okay then uh, we will define what you mean by this record blocking and blocking factor. So records of a file. So we have various records and these records of a file must be allocated disk blocks. So if we want to store these records in the hard disk, we need to allocate disk blocks. That is the disk. 
the hard disk blocks in the hard disk we have different blocks so in order to store the records of a file we need to have some blocks from the hard disk and we will be storing those records in that hard disk okay so when the block size is larger than the record size each block will contain numerous records so if the hard disk block size hard disk block size is larger than the record size so record size is lesser than the block size so in each block we can accommodate many number of records we can accommodate numerous records okay let block size be b bytes so let block size be b bytes and fixed length records uh, let it be r bytes our records are of size r bytes so b is greater than or equal to r that's what we have mentioned here so the block size is greater than or equal to the fixed length record size the length in, uh, record size it is uh, greater than the record size now bfr so we can calculate bfr and bfr is known as the blocking factor bfr is known as blocking factor so bfr is given by uh, b by r the floor of b by r so this symbol denotes floor 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 and ceiling so floor of b by r so this denotes floor of b by r and this means the blocking factor means this many records can be stored in a particular block so if we have a block of size b and our fixed length records we have fixed length records of size r then if we have how many number of records can be stored in a block is represented using this bfr and it is given by floor of b by r so this is known as blocking factor blocking factor okay so in general if we calculate this blocking factor it may not divide uh, correctly for example if the block size is 100 bytes and our uh, record size is uh, fixed length record size is uh, 9 bytes it is 9 bytes so 100 by 9 uh, we'll get as 9 100 by 9 we will get as uh, 9 and there will be 1 byte will be empty 1 byte will be remaining because 9 into sorry 100 into 11 11 sorry 11 we can have store 11 records in that block so if the b is 100 and r is 9 100 by 9 gives 11 okay and still 1 byte will be vacant so we can have 11 records in in each block so that is known as blocking factor so bfr is 11 there okay blocking factor so in most of the cases we won't get r may not divide b exactly so we have seen this example so if we take 8 if the r size record size is 8 and b is 100 then 100 by 8 uh, gives uh, 4 bytes will be vacant 4 bytes will be vacant in the um, block so four spaces will be uh, unused four spaces will be unused okay so we have a formula to calculate that unused space in each block is given by b minus bfr into r bfr into r so if you have blocking factor as in the first case we have seen uh, 100 divided by 9 it is 11 blocking factor so 11 into 9 it is 99 100 minus 99 equal to 1 so we have one byte vacant there okay so unused vacant spaces can be calculated unused spaces can be calculated using this formula b minus bfr into r okay now a uh, number of blocks that b needed for a file of r records so a file consists of r records so a file will consist of uh, r number of records then number of blocks uh, that will be needed for that file to be stored so it is given by upper ceiling upper or ceiling of ceiling of r by bfr blocks so we require this number of blocks to store that file okay so if we have a file of r number of records so in a fi file we will have maybe 10 or 25 records so if you want to store a full file how many blocks of uh, how many blocks will be required so that is given by this formula 
r by bfr blocks okay so this is ceiling function seal of r by bfr blocks bfr blocks okay so this is important you have to learn what is blocking factor and how to calculate this unused space and also how to calculate number of blocks needed by a file so next is uh, spanned versus unspanned records so spanned records it is larger than if the records if the it is larger than a single block so if uh, all, if there are records and we have many records to be stored and uh, we have many file uh, we have many records in a particular file and we need to store it in a block if the number of records is larger than the block size if the number of records to be stored or the size of the whole records to be stored is larger than the uh, single block so we cannot store it in a single block so we have to store it in maybe two or three blocks so that is known as spanned records so pointer at end of first block points to block containing remainder of the block so if we want to store uh, records in a block it may not accommodate the block may not be able to accommodate the ho whole records so if a file consists of uh, 25 records and in a block we can accommodate only 10 records then there are 15 records that is remaining so we have to store it in three different blocks so what we have to do is pointer at end of the first blocks pointer points to the block containing remainder of record so i will show an example so this is like this so this is unspanned here uh, blocks are records there is no connection between blocks so this is uh, record one record two record three in another block i am storing record four record five record six but for spanned records here block one block two block three block four and now uh, after block 4 uh, the whole data cannot be stored in this block so block 4 we have some more data so it is stored in another block block 4's values are stored in another block also so what we do is we will have a pointer in here and it will point to the block address so rest of the record 4 will be stored here and record 5 record 6 like this it will be stored okay so this is known as spanned record so pointer at end of first block points to block containing remainder of block in unspanned records not allowed to cross block boundaries so what happens here is there will be vacant spaces so a record four half of the part or part of the record four cannot be stored here so it if they, it cannot be accommodated in this space completely then we have to take another block and store the whole record but in this case we can accommodate part of record 4 and the rest can be stored in another block and only thing is we will have a pointer here and it will point to the next address okay then how to allocate file blocks on disk so how will you allocate this file blocks so there are some standard techniques one is uh, contiguous allocation contiguous allocation here the file blocks are allocated to consecutive disk blocks so that is why it is known as co uh, contiguous allocation in contiguous allocation the file blocks so we require many blocks to store a particular file so what we do is uh, the blocks contiguous uh, blocks will be allocated for a particular file or consecutive disk blocks will be allocated for a file so this is known as contiguous allocation contiguous allocation okay so so the reading will be very fast if you want to read data from uh, from this kind of contiguous allocation it will be much more faster okay then we have linked allocation in linked allocation each file block contains a pointer to the next file block here in linked allocation it is linked like linked list you have studied linked list in data structure so each file block will contain a pointer to the next file block so we can follow that pointer and we can uh, traverse through the whole data okay then the third type is indexed allocation indexed allocation uh, in indexed allocation allocation what we do is we will have index block separately index block and data block separately or index block and file block separately 
so what we have in the index blocks we will store only the indexes of the files or the addresses of all the files will be stored in the index blocks so if you want to search uh, for an item what you have to do is we have to search for the index block and you will get the index of that particular file so if we go to that particular address we will get the uh, file details so that is known as indexed allocation so index block and file blocks will be handled separately here linked allocation there will be a linked link between those file blocks okay in contiguous allocation it is in con consecutive disk blocks the next is uh, file organization file organization so file organization it refers to the organization of the data of a file into records blocks and access structures so how to organize the data of a file in records blocks and access structures it is referred to as file organization okay so it includes the way records and blocks are placed on the storage medium and how they are interlinked how we will interlink all these things how to handle overflow everything will be studied so there are various file organization techniques so in this lecture we will see two types of file organization the first one we call it as uh, files of unordered records or we call it as heap files heap files so heap or we call it as pile uh, pile file also pile file so here records are placed in file in order of insertion here there is no ordering that is why it is known as unordered so whenever new records are inserted new records are placed in file in the order of insertion so one one, one record comes it will end be uh, stored at the end when another record comes it will be stored at the end so all the records will be unordered that is why it is known as heap file or pile file okay so inserting a new record is very efficient so it is very efficient we simply have to add at the end a new record if i want to add a new student into the database it is very easy that record will be added to the end but searching for a record requires linear search because it is unordered linear search we have to start from the beginning if i want to find a particular student data i have to start from the beginning i have to traverse to the next third third element fourth element for fifth record sixth record like that i have to traverse okay then deletion uh, techniques so how will you delete a thing so we have two methods for deletion in this uh, heap files one we call it as rewrite the block method rewrite the block method so what we do is uh, we will first if, I, if we want to uh, delete a particular record so if a student has left the college so what we have to do we have to delete that particular record so what we do is the program will find its block first then we will copy that block into a buffer and after that delete the record from the buffer after deleting from the buffer we what we do is we will rewrite the block back to the disk that is why it is known as rewrite the block technique so in order to delete what we have to do is we have to find the record first we have to find the record uh, we have to copy the sorry we have to copy that block first into the buffer then delete the record from the buffer okay in that block there will be different records so what we have to do is we have to first find which block that record is for example if it is uh, it is in 25th block we have to find that 25th block we have to come bring that block to main memory or buffer then after that you find the particular record delete the re that record and then copy back the disk block to the uh, file oh sorry the hard disk so this is known as rewrite the block so automatically it will be deleted okay so the problem here is there will be vacant space there since that record is block deleted from that disk block there will be some space unutilized space inside that block okay then another second method we have is a deletion marker what we do is we have an extra byte or bit we call it as deletion mark a marker which is stored with each record so when a record is deleted 
this deletion marker will be set to some value maybe some value like minus one some value will be set so it means if that record has this uh, deletion marker to that particular value it means that is deleted that is not there so we can use that space so that is known as dele uh, deletion marker deletion using your deletion marker okay then second type of file organization is uh, ordered records files of ordered records of work we call it as sorted files so sorted files the meaning itself conveys that it is sorted the files are sorted so the it is also called ordered a sequential file it is ordered a sequential file here records are sorted by ordering field so there will be a particular field to sort for if you want to store the student records we will sort based on university register number okay or we will sort based on name of student so that field is known as name is known as ordering field or university register number is known as ordering field now it is called ordering key if the ordering field is a key field so if we take university register number it is a key of that uh, data so or that record so then it is known as key field okay so sorry uh, ordering key it is known as ordering key so records will be sorted based on an ordering field and if that field is a key value then we call it as ordering key so advantages of this sorted file is uh, we know the reading records in order of ordering key value is extremely efficient okay it is extremely efficient to read so we since the, every all the records are sorted it is very easier to find a particular person so searching searching is very easy so finding next record is also very easy everything is in ordered manner okay uh, and we can employ this binary searching technique in the previous case we have to use linear searching here everything is ordered so simply we can perform this binary search so we know the running time or average worst, worst case running time and all uh, best case everything we know how uh, for linear search and binary search so binary search is much more efficient than linear search so this is an example for sorted files so block one we have it is order the ordering field is name based on name we are sorting all the records so this is alphabetically sorted here in block two also it is alphabetically sorted Alph block three like this there are n number of blocks so all the records are sorted so if you want to search a particular thing it is very easy so we can go to a particular block and we can see that it is you have to perform simply binary search here okay so these are this is an example for sorted files so this is the average access times for various file organizations so we have already seen heap or unordered so we require this linear search method so average blocks to access a specific record is b by 2 we require at least b by 2 okay that is the linear search running time is b by 2 so we have to uh, uh, this is the average number of blocks to access to find a particular record then ordered uh, ordered files in the case of ordered files if you are performing sequential scan or if you are performing linear search it is b by 2 but in ordered file we can perform binary search also it will be log b to the base 2 okay so uh, we will see heap files in the next lecture this is a reference thank you